begin. Uh, we'll call the meeting to order and please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Anyone here who would like to speak for public audience? Seeing none, we'll move on. <laughs> no public audience. Okay. Review and adopt uh, the minutes for February 1st. Does anyone have changes to the minutes? I do not see any. Okay. 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 Really? Okay. All right, then these minutes will stand as uh, we do not need a motion because they will stand as permanent so if there are no changes. Okay. Can I have a second? <laughs> Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. You've moved it and seconded it? I, I thought you said you got two, so then I said. I <laughs> Just with Dave fighting. is the second. <laughs> Helen the first, Dave is the second. <laughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 The minutes pass. Aye. Aye. Okay. Ethel Walker Woods update. We have with us Adam Kessler and Jeff Shea. As you know, um, the Board of Selectmen approved funding to do some improvements at Ethel Walker Woods, and we had discussed with this board that we weren't going to do a lot, just basically the parking lot and the entrance off of Town Forest Road. But Adam and Jeff have been working with, um, what? Mylone and McBroom to go over um, proposals. And so this does not require our approval. This is just information. I, th I believe it is going to conservation at some point, right? Well, we got, uh, we received approval last night. Oh, perfect. It already went there. Um, and it does not need to go to zoning, as I understand. It will be going to zoning. It does uh, need to go to zoning. Because it's, there's floodplain. Okay. From Stratton Brook that's on site. So zoning has the purview under uh, their jurisdiction to review this in terms of impacts to the floodplain that's on site. And what about planning? Does it need to go to planning? Uh, I don't believe so. Because these are minor infrastructure, no major uh, buildings. Okay. So why don't you walk us through what the plan is? So uh, Malone Room uh, has been retained to provide their design services for this project. Oh, can and, you, uh, Adam, can you come over oh, so yeah. Helen can hear? Yeah. Right there. Um, oh, thank you. So what's in front of you now is their, the rendering that they produced. Uh, which shows the project very nicely. Um, essentially what we're going to do, um, our thought here was as a first phase to the master plan for Ethel Walker Woods, was to create uh, a nice front door entry and create an accessible entry to the uh, hiking trails there. Um, so the first step is to construct, reconstruct the parking lot. Um, as you know out there, it's kind of an expansive gravel, sandy area. Um, this project reduces the footprint of that parking area um, and formalizes it to a standard size that you normally see elsewhere. And um, under the project, we'll pave it as well. Um, part of our the way we structured the design plans, uh, because of limited funding, we are going in with a, what they call base bid, so the contractor's minimum amount of pavement that he will do is the entrance and the first five spaces. Um, you can see a line on the plan and then the detached area, mm -hmm. that's the remaining area, um, is another 90 feet, which would be gravel. So a typical gravel lot um, and pervious. So we get a little bit of pavement on there for the entrance. Uh, which is important for erosion uh, control as well as accessibility. So there'll be one handicap accessible space uh, in that front corner um, under this this phase. If the bids that we receive um, are under the funding that's available, we'll have the contractor pave the remaining portion of that lot. Uh, it's really for long-term maintenance um, and durability. So that'll be decided once we go out to bid. Um, the other aspects of this. What specifically will be decided? Uh, how, much how much or how? How much is paid? How much? Okay. Right. So whether right now, I, I this, see this. this is the plan. This is what they're bidding for. Right. If there's actually, if the bids come in low, they'll consider paving this. Right. Right. I got yeah. that. Okay. What is the gate? Uh, the gate is simply for access control. Um, so right now, there's a gate that's there now. 
uh, which is closed because of uh, during the winter. Um, so we still want to retain that ability to close off the lot if needed. We'll be installing some walkways as well. Um, those will be bituminous concrete um, and will run down to the existing bridge uh, that goes by the pavilion that's there. Uh, the pavilion will also be kind of updated, cleaned up a little bit um, that's down there. And then the bridge crossing, um, that could use a little bit of work and is probably uh, past its useful life. So it'll be replaced under this project. Uh, we do not plan on impacting any of the existing foundations. That are, um, there's kind of a weird structure there that retains water. Uh, we won't be touching that as well. So any disturbance in that area um, will simply be temporary um, and to we'll be placing basically a new structure on top of the existing foundation. Um, one of the other alternates that we might accept depending on funding is the um, there's a set of stairs that we might replace uh, closer to the parking lot um, that you can see right here. Uh, this, this run here, it kind of that pathway exists today. Um, we'll be removing what's there because it kind of has its useful life, and it's another option that we're giving the contractor depending on their bid and what kind of price we can expect. Um, there's two buildings on site, or there was two buildings. One uh, was red with stone foundation near the existing parking lot. That has been removed by Parks and Rec uh, and the slope kind of restored, so it looks like it never existed. Um, the second building is the changing rooms, I believe they were used for, which is closer to Stratton Brook. Um, I had no idea. Right down here. Uh, <laughs> it's another structure that kind of doesn't have a use anymore and is kind of a safety issue. So under this project, we'll be removing that as well. Uh, we didn't remove it with the other building because of its proximity to the brook. Uh, we wanted to wait for a con conservation um, permit to be in hand before we disturb any area over there. Um, I mean, that's pretty much the gist of it for uh, this first phase. Talk about the sign, because we have to do this or we lose our grant funding. <laughs> we are doing a new, a new park sign. Um, Malone and Broom is currently working on that, the details to that. Um, and as part of this project, we're also having them develop um, kind of a master plan for signage through the entire park. Uh, the idea there um, was for them to, to give us an idea of where it makes sense to put signage on the trails, at trailheads, uh, kind of standardize the look and feel of it. Um, and our, our hope there is if there's an Eagle project that comes up, we can point to certain locations and certain types of signs that they that would be appropriate for an Eagle Scout to install. Jerry, would that be compatible with other parks in the Parks and Rec uh, domain? It, it would, and we actually had a previous Eagle project in there, so we'd make sure that it was all, you know, it would be all compatible. Yeah. Um, we're, we're hoping to get that information from Malone and McBroom um, after we submit the zoning, kind of get our permits underway and then have them focus their efforts on that. What, what, what is the construction timeline? I think we're expecting uh, only a few months um, for this construction. It's, it's a pretty quick and easy job for a contractor. Uh, so we're really hoping to be able to go out to bid uh, this year and have it constructed before the fall. Oh, that would be awesome. It would be really nice to, to be able to do that. Um, that's what we're aiming for and that's what we'll be pushing Alone to bring to do. So you mentioned an overall number of what you anticipated could be for the cars, parking spaces. So under um, right now, I believe it's a uh, about thirty cars. Uh, Twenty-eight to thirty cars will be able to park there. Um, well, because it's a shared parking lot too. It won't, not only for people going into the trails, but it, you know. Or the pavilion or whatever. Right, and part of, um, you know, I think the back 10 spaces will be likely be gravel, uh, you know, like I mentioned before, based on bidding. Um, and we're having them structure it so that in the future, should it turn out to be a very popular spot and the gravel is just not being kept up or 
uh, the wear and tear is a little too much for it. Um, we'll have the ability to kind of go back in there and quickly pave it, so that wouldn't be a whole other project. Um, we're taking that into account in the future. What is this thing here? Uh, that's an old pavilion uh, that was recently t taken down by Parks. It was. Um, it was up on the on the hill there, kind of tucked away, and um, I think that one had gone through its useful life as it well. Had, we actually had the building inspector come out and take a look at it, and he advised that it be taken down. It was uh, the, it was the, the, the trail that goes up into the woods. Yeah, it kind of went up the mm -hmm. little bank there. It was sort of pavilion right there. Yes. But it's actually not, I mean, the, the asphalt base is still there, and there was actually a stone wall that was built up there, so it's not a bad area for someone who may just want to go up there and picnic, uh, you know, put leave some tables up there. I think it'll be nice. But, oh, that would be a good evening yeah. staff, put a picnic table yeah. there. How far is the, uh, the line, let's say, to the border of Masako when you're going up the hill there? It's... Up, as you go up, right where I believe, and Don, you may know better, it's up as you go, if you go up the dirt road, or the, the road towards, pa just past the baseball field, yes. and it takes it right up towards Tooten Hills, mm -hmm. I think it's right in there. Oh, the bicycle, bicycle path. Yeah, and, and yeah. you're asking about Masako Forest versus the town, yes. town it's, forest. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, right it's, 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 it's not very far beyond the, yeah. the ball. It's right, 100 feet or so. Yes, and it's marked. Masako yeah. Forest is a state forest, is marked pretty well. So, yeah. Who are we going to name the brook after? I'm sorry? Kevner. <laughs> we have an unnamed tributary. <laughs> I think the town's got a pro profit opportunity here. Yeah. yeah. Naming rights. Naming rights. I'll talk to Sean to ask him about that. He's always naming things when I step out of the room. Okay. What was that? Wait, that was man made, obviously, to get runoff water to fill the pond. Believe right. so. Correct. Right. Right. Any other questions for Adam? Thank you. Um, thanks. Great work on this. I appreciate you guys. I know um, I had a lot of feedback from this committee, from conservation, and we go to zoning. And I know the Board of Selectmen is excited to see this uh, project begin. And I, you should plan on a ribbon cutting. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. All right. I'm sorry. Let me show you. Okay. Um, we were going to get a plan of conservation and development update from uh, Bill, but he's not here tonight, so we'll go on to that. Jerry was going to give us a quick signage on the river update. Yeah, the signs, actually I gave them to Orlando, uh, our park superintendent, the day before yesterday, and they'll both be going up. Uh, coincidentally, we're going to be um, uh, going to the uh, Park and Rec Commission at the uh, April meeting to propose um, kind of universal signage in our parks, uh, transitioning to carry in, carry out, uh, no trash barrels, trash-free park. So we talked about that um, uh, when these were proposed, and we we are going to move forward with those. So. So is that something that needs to be coordinated with my loon and the M and Ms? I don't believe so. Because we don't, we want all the signs in all our parks similar, or? We, we do, I, I think, well, I should go back. They, we do want them all to be, um, and, and we haven't gotten a final design yet. Okay. We've, we've gotten wording, as I think I mentioned to you, we'd like to have our department logo so people identify this with, our, with the department who's maintaining these areas. Um, but uh, um, we did, so we, we want to transition, um, you know, to that, We'd like to do it before the summer and make it a full, you know, uh, get it on our website, get it to all the youth sports groups, get it to all the users of the parks. And so that would be something, if you don't mind, just passing along that information to Adam who walked out the room and so they pass it on to MM so that they we'll are aware of yep. your intentions there. Thank you. That's exciting. I may actually, I mean, my loan McBroom sure has had experience with this. I may, you know, just run it by them to see if they have any That's suggestions. They, I'm sure they've probably dealt with this before, just to make sure that we've got it, you know, we're not missing anything. But. That's a good idea. Yeah. Did you say there is a, a projected time for this to be done? We'd like to get it going for the summer. 
get oh, you know we we've, we've tried it in a couple of smaller parks and uh, we'd like to get it completely rolled out in the summer. Yeah. Okay. On the, back on the uh, POCD thing, the um, draft of the plan is on the website. Oh right, good point. So, that is worth taking a look. Everyone should take a look at it. Well, <coughs> well, can I make a comment back to that too? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, I did my homework um, a while back, but I went over and reviewed it again last night and. Uh, I guess I can direct my questions to Bill. Are we going to have a chance to discuss it in the meet committee again or not? Well, we can, but it's not our decision at this point. It's really at the planning level. So you I can contact him. Yeah. Okay. Directly. It doesn't okay. come to us for approval. It's not actually due until the fall, right? I no, mean, but it goes to. It has to go to the selectmen for a public meeting. Right. And so you have an you opportunity. It? it has not been scheduled. I don't know. Okay. But you should take a look at it. Any feedback, give it to Bill or Jamie. All right. So okay. signage, POCD, are we good with those two? Okay. Moving on to a uh, review of the water shortage ordinance. So it came to uh, public hearing at the Board of Selectmen. Uh, we had some nice comments. Uh, Don, you did a nice job presenting it. Council was Not there presenting enough. it. Well, <laughs> we didn't have the votes. <laughs> We had three votes, uh, but there were six of us, and at that point, we did not have a fourth vote. So we referred it to subcommittee with Mike and Chris, who are trying to incorporate some of um, Mike and Cheryl's concerns that there be language in the ordinance itself that you should exhaust uh, non-mandatory steps first before you go to the thing, which, had, you know, Chris and I felt that, that was an unnecessary step because you do that before you... Uh, authorize the ordinance, but that language was important to them and to make them feel comfortable. So they're working uh, with council to try and get language to accommodate Cheryl and Mike's position, which is, you know, I don't have a strong objection to. If they feel they need that to get the ordinance passed, I'm happy to support that. So they're working with council. I don't expect that to be at our next meeting on Wednesday, but at the following meeting. What's the official word on the drought right now? Has have status changed at all? With the snow cover, it wasn't enough, or so as of not two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks ago it had not. I, I will double check it at the next meeting. Uh, some counties that it has changed. Harper was still listed, um, so I haven't checked it in the last two weeks. So I'll have to double check that. As of a week or so ago, still. Connecticut stood out as the the state in the union that had the greatest proportion of its territory in drought. And most of it was still in a rather high level of drought. Even when the drought has passed, I think the groundwater doesn't recover as fast. But interestingly, and we made this point in talking about it, there's a connection between the groundwater and the, and the rivers. And all the pumping we do out of, of groundwater depletes the river. And I read a thing just yesterday that suggests that uh, it will be decades before the rivers recover from the effects of this drought. Really? Because you've, you've, you've killed so much. So much. You, you got the river down to a small subset of what it should be. You've got only little little ponds, not a, not a flowing river. So you've killed a lot of fish. What fish there are are in small ponds. So the, the herons, the otters, you know, all the guys that eat the fish have been eating the fish. Um, a lot of the, the food for the fish have died. Uh, when it was that shallow, it froze down to the bottom, as it doesn't usually do. So more things got killed. So the, the impact of the drought on the river, rivers and streams, uh, has been massive and will take, indeed, decades to, to recover. Do they have a, a measure like they do for floods and say this is a 50-year drought or a 100-year drought? No, or? Not that I've heard. Pardon? Not that I've heard. Not to have. So, so, the reco so the recovery time would be, you know, determined as to the grade of of drought. Well, it's but so many things have died, you know, and and the and the river's ability to to foster the regrowth is diminished. So it's 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 a big long term concern. So let's consider it a hundred year drought. Yeah. 
work work toward you know. So John Hampton did introduce legislation to do a statewide uh, water mm -hmm. plan, mm -hmm. and so hopefully some of those concerns could be incorporated into it. Yeah, because there are long-term impacts on that. Although I will say we are watching a flood potential <laughs> over the next <laughs> day or two, so moment. it doesn't feel like there's a drought. <laughs> we're going to be monitoring that river. I haven't seen the latest update, but uh, with rains we're expecting tomorrow. All right, good on that. Moving on to open space and parks master plans, both um, Jeff and um, uh, Jerry are working on two. Op we have two master plans that have been approved by the Board of Selectmen. One is for open space stewardship. As you know, we're shifting towards stewardship, and part of that involves planning for that shift. And the second part is a parks master plans. And Jerry's going to talk about the two plans and the potential to maybe do them together because they are compatible, same department and stuff like that. And, uh, and I'm sure Jeff will speak to it as well, but we'll start with Jerry. Yeah, just to follow up on, on what Lisa said, we do have a proposed um, uh, expenditure in the budget for the 17-18 uh, fiscal year for a parks master plan and for some background uh, the last time a plan was done was actually prior to the Simsbury Farms being built there were two that were done in the late 60s and I think the second one might have been the early 70s so we're, we're at a point where we're long past due where we should and given the demographics changing I think that the timing is is good my the question was, given the time, given that we've got the open space master plan out there and the parks master plan, which may come about, should there be any sort of um, synchronization, I guess, between the two? Should the two be combined? And, and from my standpoint, I, I bring it from my standpoint, the fact that we are the one organization that is responsible for the, the maintenance of both. So at what level, if any, should those two um, be combined um, or you know n not at all maybe some you, you may look at them as, as totally separate functions that uh, but it, it, it from our standpoint I, I thought it was it warranted discussion to see if it was something that you know we ought to uh, we ought to look at um, Jerry do these things I, duplicate the plan of conservation and development it seems to me that that document is supposed to cover a lot of that space. I think they would utilize a lot of what's in the POCD when they the, when it's put together. That would be my... These plans also incorporate a lot of maintenance and uh, it might be capital and, and some right. of the fields. Like One um, of the I things that we're looking for is just that maintenance standards, uh, uh, level, you know, staffing levels, capital equipment investment, things like that. So that's where I was thinking is doesn't Justify the the two being you know being joined at some point. Have, have, have we? I've got a Don oh, no. Ben Hillen. Have, have we seen the open space plan? No, it hasn't been done yet. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. I, I misunderstood. I thought it had been adopted. Been oh no, now. it's it's been approved by the board of selectmen to do one. Oh, to do one. Well, yes. Thank you. All right. <laughs> we have funded oh, oh, the. <laughs> the <laughs> to have the discussion. <laughs> I thought I missed something. No, 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 no. And that would be something, the open space plan would be, you know, also shown to conservation because that's part of conservation's job. So it's not like, uh, which is why we bring it up at open space to give everyone a heads up of where things may come. Uh -huh. Helen. I just, you made a comment just now that jogged me. You said something about how open space acquisition may be shifting to stewardship. So that's where you're coming in and saying because you have let's say the nuts and bolts to do conservation may be your guiding hand and what what you do but let's say you're you have the job of getting the funds and the budget every year to accomplish what you have to do but i'm still thinking i would like to consider keeping the two plans themselves separate even though you might have to find a way to coordinate um the upkeep you know the steward the actual maintenance issues um, because you still you should not close the door on acquisition it's an it's open program go ongoing odd infinitum because if you talk with conservationists you know I think you understand that you might find this little piece that has to become important you want to remain open to the idea of preservation 
through acquisition. And the plan of development says that the most d desired way to uh, preserve land is through acquisition. So, I mean, it follows through I think that, would that be thought process. So I'm just thinking I would like to keep the master plans separate, but if you find that you need to find a way to uh, for the maintenance piece. Plus, you also want to encourage funding for maintenance through the open space fund. And if you don't promote that, you'll never get those funds ever. If you try to maintain only on tax dollar, you know, on the budget, it might not be to our best advantage. So you want to have that separateness so that you could encourage um, the stewardship through funding through the, the Open Space Fund. And it's something that I'm just thinking out loud with, but I'm just thinking that's a, I think it deserves a little thought and before you go to the next step. Anyone else have comments on that? Dave? No, I just think we. the question is, what is the goal of open space? Is it to consume all the land available in town? I mean, where's the boundary of we've got enough? Well, according to conservationists, there is no ultimate boundary. It's not like you set a goal to say you're going to get a percentage of a particular square on the earth and say you're going to conserve X number of acres and the rest can go to this and the rest can go to that. The plan of development itself encourages an open-ended program. If you read it carefully, that's the way it's written. So, Dave, I Should that be changed? I mean, it, the question is, we, we're at 31, 32 percent, something like that, 33. Yeah. But that's... Um, I mean, that's at relative. some point... huh? It's relative. It's not relative. It's absolute. Thirty-three percent is thirty-three. No, no, no. But I'm saying that the importance is relative. Is relative to what you have, let's say, conserved and why. So I. Well, the que it's a question. I don't know the answer to it. I'm asking, how do you decide when you have enough? Um, that's. I think that's a fair a question. I think that's, that's. I think that's an excellent question to put out there because I think this involves a lot of thinking, and I don't mind discussing it. So we do kind of have that process, and that process starts with um, one: the POCD identifies mm -hmm. things that you might want to preserve or not preserve, and, and why. And why? Uh, we've done part of that through open space and Don's characterization of the different things. And we know that we're looking for connectivity. That would be part of an open space plan. What are the opportunities for connectivity? Mm -hmm. um, the limits on it really start and end with the Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen has to initiate the process. So that's a policy decision by your elected officials who are elected to represent you. It, obviously, they'd get input from various groups and things would come out. I think the open space plan, and let me know if I have it wrong. It would be stewardship about our current open spaces. There may be opportunities that they would recommend for connectivity, saying this might be something in the future to consider. Um, it's not really to lay out. We have the criteria for open space that we have in the ordinance mm -hmm. that we just mm -hmm. did. So it would incorporate those things in there. But it, from Jerry's perspective, it's mostly about how are we stewarding what we have, what equipment do we need? It's a, almost a driver for the budget. Like when you do capital planning for the town, if you don't have a master plan, it's harder to get the funding. If you have a master plan that says we're going to need this to do this to do this to do this, it's helpful. So that's where putting the two together is very helpful. It doesn't mean that if you do uh, open space planning that it's to turn open space into parks and rec. It's not. It's more mm -hmm. how do you care for what you have. Right. And Betty Bay and we'll go back, you know, when those plans were done 40 years ago, um, you know, they, they looked at, at all the open space and there were recommendations made. Certain parcels should, you know, remain passive. Certain should be considered active. Certain should remain agricultural. So there were, you know, different roles identified. And, and granted, we're, you know, 40 years later, but um, you know, I'd, I'd be, you know, curious when that, that, you know, separate objective set of eyes comes in and looks at, you know, the 300, 3,000 or so acres of parks and open space, what they, 
they see as a, as a you know a combined picture. And That's they would look at the easements that we have there. Some are designated open space and will remain so in perpetuity, and they can sort of help. I mean, I don't think anyone's looking to change the allocation at this point. It's really how do we manage what we have. But in addition, you have to really look at the plan of development. The POCD of really course. has so yeah, many cross-references. Oh, and, absolutely. And then they have the thought process is there first. And then we follow and we augment it, we change it, or how do we implement it? And you come in because you've got the nuts and bolts and you have to decide the money and when it's going to be done. They have their role. Everybody has a role, you know, but I think the guide starts with the POCD. Absolutely. And that would be the first document that both plans would look at. That's what we do in all our development plans. Right. It all starts with the POCD, which is why that's such an important document, because it lays out the priorities for the town. Decision points come at different things, like the yes. sale or purchase of open space starts with the Board of Selectmen. This board has a role in it as well if we decide to purchase. Conservation has a role. Zoning has a role. Sometimes planning has a role. So all these people, no, no one person gets to make the decision on when we're doing this. So the decision on whether to combine the two plans Again, you know, we are an advisory board that will ultimately be made by uh, Culture Parks and Rec, who is uh, Jerry's, that's who he uh, reports to and will give him direction. And of course, they'll, Jerry will do that in consultation with Jamie and with Jeff um, in terms of coordinating with the land use boards, uh, planning, I'm assuming conservation, Culture Parks and Rec. So we are not the board that decides that. But, you know, certainly giving you your feedback, happy to do it. You can take it back and, you know, understand uh, Helen's point is an important one to consider, but it will not be our board that makes that call. So it's just a courtesy from um, Jerry to get everyone's feedback on that before he goes to Culture Parks and Rec. Thank you. All right, and just along the line, so um, if, can I have a motion to amend the agenda because I was going to give an update on that West Ledge Trail? So moved. Uh, to change the agenda, I'm in here for what? Uh, Second. An update on the West Ledge Trail. Okay. Okay, so I did have an opportunity, uh, Jeff and I had an opportunity to meet with, um, and I've had an opportunity to talk with Jerry, but we met with council yesterday just to confirm. And so because we do own the easement, we do have the ability to do what we want on it. It will require uh, surveying, which will cost about $2,000. With the onset of the uh, open space master plan beginning, I'm not inclined to take on any new projects until we've completed that process because then we may have other priorities that we want to do. Um, but again, that would you know, certainly could be a recommendation for this board if you want to go for it, but really, again, the ultimate decider is going to be um, Culture Parks and Rec, and if they decide to do it, it requires land use things that would go through conservation as well. And the board would probably have to, I don't know if our board would need to actually intervene on that or not. So, at least if I understand, are you saying that the, what, is the principal driver of your thinking the cost of the survey? No. My, no. The, the principal driver of my thinking is, I'm not inclined, well, one, it, it, the budget is so bad right now that there are limited resources. We've been asked to cut, you know, a million dollars in operating budgets between the boards. So, one, resources are super limited. But more important to that, I almost want to complete the master plan for open space, look, looking priorities and connectivity. Is that where we would start, or is there some other area where we would start, given the limited resources the town has? I'm just more a methodical person. I'd like to have the plan in place before we do a new trail, but that's just my opinion. There's been no money allocated for this project yet, anyway. So no. Okay. So I was my, my what I was thinking about was that it would be, I think potentially possible to find private money to pay for the survey but the donors of the private money would want a reasonable assurance that the trail would be done if they put the money up for the survey that's why i asked whether your right. thinking was principally driven by money no it's principally driven by getting the master plan done first and then i you know and i we also we haven't heard from the owners do they the butters do they want it i mean i don't know it's, Has I, it been formally put to them yet? No, no, no. no. Yeah. But it's not being driven by them. Mm -hmm. They haven't come to us. Not that that matters, because there are public goods, why we would do stuff anyway. Just from my perspective, in terms of knowing the amount of work that Jerry and Jeff have on their plates, 
which is actually and the limited amount of resources that they have to do those and given that we are starting with the open space master plan I'm not seeing a rush to do this but if there's something I'm not thinking about I'm open to that that's sort of my thinking but let's go back one more question about the master plan situation what was your target date for trying to accomplish any of that well the, the the money for the uh, park master plan would not be approved until July 1. Okay. So, I mean, we could potentially start, you know, an RFP or RFQ process kind of concurrently, but it wouldn't get going probably until the fall, I would get at the earliest. Okay. So obviously the parks master plan RFP will be shared and get, they'll get input from Culture Parks and Rec. And uh, the open space master plan, you might want to get input for conservation, just what they're looking for. And planning, I don't know. Is there any other board that, obviously, Culture Parks and Rec as well? Because, I mean, Culture Parks and Rec is going to be driving both of these because that's who Jerry reports to. But any, you know, I would expect input from all the boards in terms of what they're looking for. But they, these things have been done, and I mean, it's not like they're starting from scratch. People do these plans all of the time. So that's where Jerry and um, Jeff are really. But we rely on their expertise as professionals to help us develop that RFP. Any questions? Jeff, did you want to add anything to that? Not right now, but uh, we, I'm just thinking, do we meet, we meet one more time before that, so that's, right? Before we, what? Before that Ju July 1st date, and we're just thinking we are meeting one more time. I don't know. Yeah, June I think so. First. June 1st. <laughs> But we don't have a say in whether mm -hmm. that gets approved no, or yeah. no. But okay. If there's any oh yeah, if we have insights, input, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And you should get those in writing to Jerry. Jeff, what were you going to say? I don't. Remember. You don't remember? At this point, no, I don't have any comments at this point. So Except that this is something that is fairly typically done in many towns. Yeah, I, I guess. Well, what I was going to say is just a, a little to jog your memory. When we developed the Ethel Walker Master Plan for Ethel Walker Woods. We thought that might be a good model to kind of expand into all the open space. And that's kind of how, how this thing came about, I think. Uh, when, you know, Jerry obviously has issues with maintenance and, you know, just getting getting our arms around what, what the metrics might be for open space and what the requirements may be and the security issues and, you know, public access, connectivity, all that stuff that, you know, the, the POCB doesn't dive down to that level of kind of looking at it. And also tying the inventory in that has been completed, uh, you know, by by this committee, you know, that'd be a nice thing to kind of roll roll into it, and budgeting. So, you know, whether that Ethel Walker master plan is a good model or not, I, I don't think the jury's out on that yet, in terms of what we're, what we, you know, what we expect for a deliverable. But that's kind of what we can talk about once this thing gets going. And, you know, and that's all. I just wanted yeah. to kind of say that this was kind of a small exercise. It seemed to go well. I think it was well received. So yeah. we're going to kind of expand that. I would agree. So I would just add that that master plan did receive statewide recognition and won a major award. So say that again. The the Ethel Walker plan received a major award from the state of Connecticut. So that I forgot the name of it, but it. Was Ten words or less, could you tell me? I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear everything that Jeff was saying. That his his your comments were were addressed specifically to how do you go about creating that master plan using the model? Is that what I? Well, again, it's a smaller scale uh, sort of I guess framework for what could be I guess uh, applied to all the open space within the town in terms of what you're looking at. So, like, they looked at vernal pools, and mm -hmm. they had, rep you know, recommendations there. Don't do this. Do do, do this near vernal. They did some things on um, uh, invasives. When you said they, meaning? My loon. Yes. Firm. The people who produced that plant. Yeah. And so, I mean, these are the kind of things they're going to take comprehensive looks at. How do we take a comprehensive look at invasives across our community. Are we really ever going to be contain able to contain them? And if not, how do we live with them? And how do we work with them? Issues of connectivity. How do we dive deeper into uh, making sure what we're doing is um, consistent in one area and another so that we're uh, preserving the health of all our open space? And 
you know, stuff like that. And then it goes to how do you fund it? And what do you need to fund it to do these things that we want to do? And that will be based on the POCD conservation's input. We'll say, we want you guys to look at this. They'll give input. Cultural Parks and Rec might say, you know, between these two options, this one's a lot more expensive. Choose the less expensive one, unless you're going to commit to funding it. I mean, all these things need to all be looked at. Um, but it's a good start, and it's a good decision point, and it's a good way to, and as Jeff, uh, Jeff said, it's a good way to incorporate the work of this committee, which we just spent, mostly Don and Jerry, spent months trying to categorize all our open space, and we finally have an inventory, which we've never had. It's a phenomenal achievement yes. by uh, Jerry and Don and Adam, our intern, who helped us two summers doing that, and to, that's a good way to put it to use. I mean, that's the first step you have to do is sort of identify what you have. Then you mm -hmm. can do a master plan, and that will help them do their master plan. So it's really just about the beginning of the process. And as, you know, Jerry wanted to give you an update so that as he begins the process with Culture Parks and Rec, if there's something particular you want considered or you think we need to evaluate, just let them know. It, again, it won't be our decision. It's Culture Parks and Rec is steering this with Jerry in consultation, and conservation will have a role to play because um, they're in charge of some of the management of our uh, open spaces. But And then they'll be guided, of course, by the Plan of Conservation and Development because that's our overall planning document for the town. And so, but it's just a courtesy heads up. Here's where we are in that. And, you know, Helen, your thing on the future of our forest, you know, uh, that may be part of it, too. Sure. Uh, okay. Would you like to hear more about sure. that? Sure. Uh, we're up to close to 60 people registered, and we reached out specifically um, <clears throat> to all the surrounding towns. And I've even spoken um, personally with each of the town staff designated person, whether it be the first selectman, planner, or somebody in each of the towns, um, we will have represent representation from every single town, either through their town staff, fewer numbers there, but specifically through the SLTs, I mean SLT, Granby, East Granby, Bloomfield, Avon, Farmington, Canton, so it's ringed all the way around. Mm -hmm. Um, so we do have that all representation, which is good. Really good. And we know that Jerry, Mike Glidden, and there's one other person. Oh, me. And Jamie will be there, right? I think you no. said James, Jamie was not available. Jamie. So maybe it's me, Mike, and That's, Jerry. Uh, it's zoning commission night meeting, so. Right. Oh, that's why he couldn't make it. But Mike Glidden, Jerry, and I will be there. Mm-hmm. Welcome. Yes, I think, <laughs> hope it'll be a good evening. I think it'll be interesting. Very. I appreciate your organizing it, and I think I'm excited about it. And there will be a light supper. Which, welcome to come. <laughs> <laughs> Catered. That'll get people there. <laughs> Catered. <laughs> now we appreciate your uh, uh, organizing it and excited that so many people are interested in participating. I'm happy to do it. I thought it was important and. I'm glad it's happening. It's good to have before we start the master planning. Mm -hmm. So it's another mm -hmm. it's another piece of information that they can uh, bring to the attention of uh, whoever they end up hiring and then put into the uh, P, uh, RFP process. There was one little, I just mentioned something that impressed me when I read this book. It talked about how, and it, fo it made me focus a bit. Um, in a way. Um, it talked about how all that we have been doing over the many decades, um, that we were using the information that had been brought forth and convincingly in the scientific community, that was what we were basing all of our decision making on, and that that had not changed for 40 years, but that in the year 2014, we, for the first time in all of those decades, began to receive uh, newer information. And so it, it helps to understand that. And so that you can put the you know, past practice together with mm -hmm. changing practice. And uh, so that's what I'm looking forward to learning. 
Right. And of course, Jerry and Jeff will incorporate best practices in open space management and the hire someone who has experience. It wasn't that. all yeah. bad. I'm just saying yeah. it was just, it's, it might be changing because the world is changing. So. Well, hopefully our consultants will be up to date on the most <laughs> and best practices that are out there. That's what we're looking to hire, someone who has expertise in, in the field. Yeah. All right. Anything else we have? And move we adjourn. <laughs> okay. We can count on you for that. May I have a second? <laughs> I learned that in planning years ago. <laughs> All in favor, please say aye. Thanks, everyone. And thanks to Don, who is doing our minutes. I will send them to you for your yes. repairs. So we do need to get them up within, what is it, 48? No, there were no motions, right? Well, a couple motions, yeah. So if we can get them Seven up. days. Seven days. You'll have the motions have to be up within 48 hours, right? So 48 hours. So what is, what is this? It's going to rain tomorrow. Right. But I don't. What was this? He's doing the minutes. But I don't oh, think oh, oh, that's oh. ever done anymore. You know what I was. I mean, nobody I know of gets the motions up in 48 hours even though the statute says so.